Uh, so good afternoon. My name is Joe Hallman. Uh, I'm a product marketing manager here at Synapse Wireless. And before we begin, I want to be sure to say thank you to everyone for joining us today. I know that you're all busy, so we do appreciate you spending some of your time with us uh, this afternoon. A few housekeeping items. If you have questions during the presentation, please use the Q&A button at the top or bottom of your screen. And this will just depend on what kind of device you're using today. Uh, type your question in there and we'll try to answer these as they come in. And we'll also have time at the end to uh, take other questions. To get started, let's talk about where things come from. You know, most of us don't think about how things are made or where they come from or how they get to the stores uh, where we purchase them. The TV show, How It's Made, you know, kind of walks you through how all kinds of products like candy or shaving razors and toothbrushes and how lots of other things are made. Uh, most products, you know, even simple products are uh, designed and created and built and uh, put in boxes and then moved around on planes and trains and trucks. You know, they're everything from computer components to electronic assemblies, uh, baking ingredients, cleaning supplies, uh, all other types of parts and pieces that are manufactured. And these products are built and stored and shipped out of some really, really large buildings. Uh, these distribution centers and manufacturing environments uh, are a huge investment um, and they're critical to companies' operations. These really large buildings need lots and lots of lights for both safety and quality reasons. And all of these lights need to be managed and controlled. Uh, so today we're gonna look at some of these, some of the top challenges and needs for these lighting controls um, that exist in these spaces. So we've worked you know, closely with several fixture manufacturers to introduce solutions for key applications, including like site and area lighting applications, uh, parking lot and parking garage structures, and indoor high bay applications, which is the focus of this webinar. Um, so the same system that we're talking about here today is also used by many other indoor and outdoor applications. Uh, we do spend a lot of time working with customers and one of the things we hear from them uh, is that we're different and we're not like other control companies they've worked with in the past. Uh, our customers say things like, you know, your stuff actually works or your interface is really clean and easy to use. And one of the best compliments we hear is just that Synapse is a good partner to work with. Um, you know, like the slide says, our products are built to be reliable and easy to use. Uh, we have embedded controls and a variety of fixtures from leading manufacturers so that they're easy to sell, uh, easy to order and install. And our team is here to make sure that you uh, and your customer are 100% satisfied. Before we jump in, let's take a moment for a quick review of the Simply Snap Lighting Control System. You know, the first place to start is the gateway or the site controller. Uh, here in the top, you see the image of our central base station, which is our gateway for indoor or outdoor applications. Uh, think of this as kind of the brains of the operation. This is what talks to all the lights and sensors. Uh, it's what the customer logs into uh, to get the user interface. It also has a five button switch built into the front for uh, manual control of the light system. Uh, one gateway typically manages about 500 lights. Uh, it can be managed locally or remotely uh, over the built-in Wi-Fi, uh, ethernet uh, or cellular connections. Uh, and then as far as setup and system management is concerned, uh, you just need a device with a browser. Uh, there's no server to install, no app to download. Uh, it just works on just about any device, smartphone, tablet, uh, laptop, or desktop. Uh, like I mentioned earlier, we have worked to get our controls embedded in high bay area and uh, parking uh, structure fixtures from leading manufacturers so that you can use Simply Snap uh, and a variety of applications. Uh, for fixtures without our embedded controls, uh, we have solutions for those too. Uh, for example, if you have a fixture with a NEMA socket or a retrofit project. Uh, for our twist lock controllers, we have a 277 and a 480 volt uh, twist lock that has a built-in photo cell, and it can also integrate with motion sensors. Uh, that fits into a standard seven pin NEMA socket that you find on most uh, parking or street lights. Uh, for LED retrofits, we have our IP65 rated controller, uh, the DEM10220, which you see in the bottom right. 
Uh, and that you can mount inside a pole or external to a fixture uh, using the standard half inch threaded nipple. Now, some of the accessories here, uh, you know, larger facilities sometimes have building automation or management systems in place. And the BMS gateway uh, enables Simply Snap to talk to a customer's existing building automation system. Uh, for daylight harvesting applications, we have a wireless daylight harvesting sensor. Um, this standalone sensor can also handle occupancy detection. So it can be installed in strategic locations where you might not have a fixture with an embedded uh, sensor. Lastly, we have our wireless switches. You know, people still like to press buttons to control their light. Uh, like I showed in the previous slide, the CBS has you know, five buttons that are built into the front, but our wireless switches give you the ability to kind of distribute that push button control into uh, other locations at a customer site. After our OEM partners have done the hard work of embedding the controls into the lights, and we've done the hard work of making the wireless connections between all the lights and the gateways just work, uh, the last piece of the puzzle is the user interface. You know, it has to be uh, easy to understand and easy to use. Uh, at Synapse, we care a lot about the user experience uh, and everyone who has had a chance to use uh, Simply Snap firsthand loves it because of the simplicity. Uh, our attention to our users is why we get the kind of feedback you see on these uh, next few slides. Uh, our design process actually incorporates uh, real user feedback. Uh, we test and prototype new features and designs with customers uh, early in the design process, uh, that results in, you know, products that do what customers expect and it actually does what they want it to do. And I think that's a big differentiator for us. Um, you know, we've included a lot of screenshots throughout the rest of this presentation, uh, just so you can kind of get a feel for what it's like uh, to use Simply Snap and uh, to see some of the uh, interface. So the Simply Snap control system can be used just to manage a single uh, standalone location, uh, or it can be managed uh, used to manage multiple locations securely. Uh, the cloud software that enables all of this is the uh, Simply Snap Illuminate. It's called Simply Snap Illuminate, and it's an option that's sold separately. Uh, this option is for customers that have larger sites with multiple gateways, and they want to aggregate everything into a single interface and a single system or customers that have multiple sites that just want an easy way of having remote access to all of their locations. Another quick point to mention is that our control system is DLC certified. Um, you know, oftentimes that's a requirement for a lot of projects. Sometimes you can't even bid on a project uh, if you're not DLC listed. Uh, it's also required to submit for some utility rebates. Uh, we're listed on the DLC qualified products list for both indoor and outdoor. Uh, and we've been working with DLC for years and we're even involved in the uh, DLC committee that's working on the next version. Uh, energy codes and regulations are always, you know, kind of changing and in flux. So we're continuously developing uh, Simply Snap to adapt uh, as these requirements change. Uh, before we jump too far ahead, I wanna go over a few key features of our system. Uh, zones, uh, scenes, and schedules. Uh, these are really uh, the building blocks of our system. You know, with our network lighting controls, each light uh, has its own unique address and the lights can be grouped together uh, by the software into zones. Zones are not necessarily lights that are all located right next to each other. You could create a group called, you know, final assembly stations or something like that and have similar lighting for all of those different locations across a facility. Also, if an area changes or the lighting needs change, uh, new zones can be created, uh, removed, or existing ones can even you know, be easily changed. Uh, this gives you logical control of the lights uh, versus traditional circuit control. Um, you can group lights however you need to, so you're not limited based on how they're hardwired up for power. Uh, sensor and switch control is also now logical versus physical. So a single sensor or a single wall switch can be used to control multiple lights in a zone. 
next building block is uh, scene or scenes. And these are what are enable users to create and apply behaviors to a specific zone or multiple zones at the same time. Uh, basic example might be as simple as dim all the lights in one zone to 30% or dim all the lights in another zone to 75%. Uh, and as you can see in the interface, you basically would just pick the scene and hit apply. Um, you know, these can also be more complex uh, with sensors and different timeouts and dimming levels. For example, you might have a zone called shipping area. You want to dim it to 50% if it's vacant for five minutes uh, and then dim it to off after 10 minutes of vacancy. You know, after these scenes are created, they can again be applied directly from the user interface um, or from a wall switch uh, or scheduled. And that brings us to the final building block, schedules. So Simply Snap allows users to set up automated behaviors across multiple zones or the entire system. Uh, the built-in five-year calendar and astronomical time clock uh, make it easy to automate single events or to schedule reoccurring events, you know, well in advance, months or even years in advance. Uh, this can be you know, used for a one-time event like DEM Zone A uh, to 75% Wednesday, November 11th at 11 p.m. Or for a reoccurring event set to run you know, every Monday through Friday at uh, a specific time. So with the quick overview out of the way, let's take a look at some of the you know, kind of high level challenges that exist in these high bay applications. Um, you know, having a motion sensor on each light uh, might be good for a small room or room control, uh, but it's really bad for trying to manage a larger area. So it can be a challenge. Uh, regulations are always changing, like I said, and you know, having specific lighting control uh, capabilities uh, required. Not all controls can meet all the requirements. Um, you know, companies need different lighting uh, levels in different areas. So you need to have a, a good control system that's able to uh, modify those dimming levels um, in a flexible way. Um, you know, and these are big spaces. Many control systems, you know, simply weren't built with the range and scale uh, that's needed to cover these larger environments. And integration with other systems um, can be difficult uh, for some, some environments. And, So first thing we do when we, you know, get involved with the customers, we early in the process, we interview them to talk and find, uh, find out more about their current lighting usage in their facility. And, you know, things we learn from these conversations, you know, are that no two customers are alike. Uh, everyone does things a little bit differently and each space has, you know, slightly different needs. Uh, another thing that we're kind of surprised by is how much manual uh, human intervention uh, is still involved in the control of lights. You know, think about the last time you were in a, a big warehouse, a distribution center, or a manufacturing floor. You know, when you glance up, you see, you know, hundreds or even thousands of lights in that large open environment, and those lights are connected to multiple circuits that are controlled at an electrical panel somewhere, or they're controlled by a group of wall switches. Uh, in some cases, the people in management and operations uh, just don't communicate well uh, with each other. So the lights are left on either all the time or at least way more than they're needed. Um, other challenges using wired controls or circuit-based controls are that they're just expensive uh, to install and uh, even more difficult to rewire or modify uh, if you wanna change how things are connected together. Uh, they also don't provide much capability. Uh, it's either on or off. There's no dimming, and the groups are, again, based on how it's hardwired together. So you can't really use control systems that were designed uh, for small rooms to control, you know, these large spaces. So that's where we come in with Simply Snap. Uh, we help bridge the gap. Uh, between you know a company's energy goals and their day-to-day -day operations uh, at their facility, uh, and our system is built for these environments. 
You know, we're automating the dimming strategies with sensors and scenes uh, and schedules to help the customer save on energy, uh, all while you know providing a safer, uh, more productive work environment. Uh, so there's some huge opportunities for lighting controls in these larger spaces. Uh, and that's what we want to talk about today. So let's look at a few use cases uh, and that'll help us understand better how we're providing uh, value uh, in these environments. So use case one, uh, flexible occupancy control. Uh, I need to maximize the light output during production hours while maintaining my corporate sustainability goals. Uh, I like different dimming levels and timeout schedules for high traffic areas during operating hours. Uh, they're different than night or weekend. So one of the big advantages of using the Simply Snap system is the flexibility that it gives you with motion sensors. Uh, if you think about the way occupancy sensors have been used in legacy control environments, you have individual lights with individual motion sensors. And the problem with this approach is it's just not flexible enough. You know, the settings on each motion sensor are hardwired and can't be changed easily. Uh, the customer's stuck with whatever hold time or dimming level is configured on the sensor at the time of installation. Another problem is that the sensor is connected to every light, which adds to additional cost and the result uh, is like a popcorn effect, you know, with each light individually responds to occupancy and vacancy events. And simply snap, a motion sensor can control any number of lights in a zone, regardless of its location. So for this example, rather than having a motion sensor on every light, there's one at each end and one in the middle. If a forklift uh, comes to the aisle from either side, uh, all the lights in the zone go to their configured occupancy uh, dimming level. So in addition to being able to place the uh, occupancy sensors where you want them, uh, you also have configurable hold times and dimming levels that are done within Simply Snap uh, rather than manually on each sensor. Uh, that gives the customer control of the dimming and hold times that they can change to you know, better meet their operation schedule uh, or their environment that they're working in. In this example, the majority of the building is made up of uh, aisleways of storage aisles. And after five minutes of inactivity uh, during the day, the lights change to 50% dimming. Uh, after hours, you know, they don't wanna keep the lights on longer than needed. So the lights will shut off after a minute of inactivity. So let's take a look at uh, those settings in action at a large distribution center. Uh, you can see here on my uh, phone screen, you've got a uh, schedule set to run for that day for all zones occupancy day at 6 a.m. and another scene to run all zones occupancy night uh, after hours. Uh, these two scenes uh, use the hold times and the dimming levels that I just mentioned. So if no one's in the aisleways and the nighttime scene starts, uh, the lights will shut off, which is exactly what you see when this was manually applied uh, from the software. Uh, the picture at the right again shows the schedule uh, where these scenes are automatically applied in the system based on the time of day that you set them up. Uh, again, because these zones are set up in the software, uh, they're not tied to how the power and the circuits are wired in this building. That means the lights can be grouped however they are needed and the hold times and dimming levels can be configured uh, based on what the customer needs. Use case two, daylight harvesting. Local energy codes require us to automatically dim the lights in areas when enough natural light is present. We have skylights and need to meet the regulations, but I don't wanna impact employee safety or my operations. So daylight harvesting is becoming uh, more common as a code requirement in different parts of the U.S. and Canada. Now, when you think about daylight harvesting in an office environment, uh, you most likely think about a closed loop system that has some type of sensor pointed down from the fixture uh, at the work surface, uh, it's just measuring the light level. Uh, the issue with the high bay environment is that you, you really can't measure the light levels uh, with a sensor pointed down from the ceiling uh, at the floor that's you know up to like 40 feet away. 
Uh, the solution for that is open loop uh, daylight harvesting. So we've developed an open loop system that's designed specifically uh, for these larger open uh, area high bay applications. Uh, one sensor is pointed at the natural light, uh, typically in a skylight or window, and it's continuously dimming groups of lights uh, while maintaining the design of luminance in the space. So again, the picture in the bottom left is our standalone daylight sensor, and it's designed as a perfect fit for these types of uh, needs. Here we have a graph from Simply Snap uh, Power. It's our cloud-based uh, energy reporting app. I have two zones added side by side. For comparison, the graph is green and green represents a zone with just occupancy sensors and the graph in blue is using occupancy and daylight harvesting. So you can kind of see what happens when the sun starts coming up here in the morning at 6 a.m., 7, 8 a.m., the lights start dimming as more natural light comes through the skylights. And then as the sun sets, uh, those start ramping up their light and energy usage goes up. Um, you can see that in a 24 hour period from a couple of weeks ago, uh, the daylight zone is saving an additional 45% in energy management uh, over the occupancy zone, all while keeping the uh, light levels in that zone at the desired level. Uh, all this energy data is stored in the Simply Snap uh, application and used to get access to additional rebates. So it's easy to download uh, to create detailed reports. In this example, the customer actually used a power report uh, from Simply Snap to get an $80,000 rebate from one of their facilities. Use case three task tuning. I need different light levels for different areas of the building based on the work in those areas. Uh, controls need to be flexible enough to adjust if those needs change. So like we discussed in the occupancy use case, when you have these large buildings with these large open areas, uh, you know, you've got different people doing different kinds of jobs and tasks in the space. And these tasks may not all have the same lighting needs. Uh, the customer in this example has manufacturing technicians working you know, right next to people uh, who are working on computer workstations. Uh, the project managers had a hard time seeing their computer screens when their lights were at 100%. Um, in Simply Snap, it was easy to set up multiple zones uh, with different dimming behaviors. Uh, we call this task tuning. So the customer you know, put one section of the factory into these two zones and set up the workstations at 50% dimming and the uh, the technicians at 100% during production hours. You know, if the uh, needs of that space change, for example, if they wanted to move the workstations uh, to another area of the floor or even across the building, uh, it's very easy to move the zones around and adjust them. Uh, each light, again, is uniquely uh, addressed in our system and can be put into any number of zones in any location. Uh, many people still or many people love you know, using uh, their phone or tablet um, to control their lights, but there are still people uh, and times when the customer just wants to push a button to control the lights. You know, we do offer the same level of control, but with greater flexibility, uh, unlike a circuit switch that controls you know, all the lights on the circuit, uh, these button controls are software-based. On uh, the previous slide, I showed you, you know, the two scenes uh, for the project manager workstations. And Simply Snap, the scenes are applied uh, to button one and button two of the wireless switch. And this uh, screenshot here shows how that is configured in the software. Uh, the technicians can cut their lights on in their zone using the wall switch button one, and that'll turn the lights uh, in their zone to 100%. Um, the project managers can cut their zone on using the wall switch you know, bottom button, button two, and it'll turn the lights uh, in that zone to 50%, you know, and that keeps both groups happy. Use case number four, scalability. So we're planning to expand many parts of our facility next year and double the current shipping and receiving areas. Our lighting control system needs to be capable of working across our entire site and including uh, parking lots. 
So Simply Snap can really handle just about any size project uh, that you can throw at it. Uh, the architecture was designed to scale. Uh, we don't have different systems for small, medium, or large sites. Uh, the basic components are you know, gateway and the lights. Um, if it's a large site with multiple gateways and the customer wants to manage the system from a single user interface, uh, in Simply Snap, all they have to do is add the Simply Snap cloud piece. Uh, there's no additional hardware that's needed. So here we're going to take a look at a few examples of some indoor high bay customers. Uh, each slide I've got an uh, image of their floor plan and their uh, a screenshot of the Simply Snap interface for each site. First customer makes auto parts and they have 334 lights and sensors. And it's a single building, uh, wide open, where they have zones set up above each what they call manufacturing pods. Uh, this is indoor only and it's uh, all managed locally. Uh, they're going to expand their capabilities uh, and add remote access uh, in the near future and also the uh, power reporting tool to our cloud software. Uh, Simply Snap Illuminate. <coughs> Sorry, that. Uh, there's, again, so with Simply Snap Illuminate, Illuminate, there's no additional hardware needed uh, to add the gateway and add these services to the gateway. Second customer here is also a manufacturing space. This is a facility that expanded over time, uh, like many of them do, and they have now have 18 buildings adjacent to each other. Uh, this site has 961 lights, 79 motion sensors, and several parking lots uh, on their campus. Uh, this one's connected to Simply Snap Illuminate. So the important part to note here is that we're managing the lights in the high bay areas and the outdoor lighting in a single interface. Uh, they have zones set up for different areas and have schedules and scenes uh, based on what happens in that space. So some areas only work uh, daytime, Monday through Friday, and other areas have nighttime shifts. Uh, last example is the distribution center. It has 3,000 lights, 500 motion sensors, and 16 daylight sensors. It has wall packs and parking lot lights and multiple gateways on the site, but it's all in a single interface um through simply snap uh, one other thing on um, the parking lots for this one is the local energy code required that the parking lot lights dim by 30 percent uh, after hours and that was easy for us to do with this customer you know if the energy code changes and there's a new requirement in a year or two that says to dim the lights by 40 percent in uh after hours that's as easy as changing the dimming percent in the software uh, for that scene so these are just three examples of the kind of projects that we support with Simply Snap. Uh, use case five, multi-site. I have several locations with large lighting systems and I want fast and easy access to everything. I don't want separate systems with different username and passwords to remember. So this example is for a customer that has distribution centers and warehouses all over North America. They've got standard scenes and schedules and configurations at each facility. Uh, the beauty of having uh, each location connected up to our cloud software is that they can now can set up and manage the zones and schedules and scenes from one place. Uh, it's important to them because they have teams who manage uh, more than one building. Um, Simply Snap Cloud gives them the ability uh, to manage these multiple sites like you see in the video and that enables their operations team to quickly and easily get into one site to get the con to, to control the lights. Uh, update the schedules or troubleshoot any issues uh, from anywhere. It also gives them the ability to uh, manage their own user account credentials. You know, they have several users with different levels of access. And if any user forgets their password, they can reset it. It also is easy for them to add and remove users to this system. From a troubleshooting perspective, Simply Snap can also proactively notify uh, the system managers of problems when they're detected. Here's an example of one, uh, the circuit tied to these three lights was mistakenly shut off and Simply Snap sent an email to notify them of the issue. Uh, so they actually called the facility guy and had him check the circuit and he said, oh, everything's fine. Uh, he told him to check it again later and he eventually did find that uh, issue and found that the circuit was turned off and he turned it back on. Last use case, I know we're going through these pretty quick. so. Uh, communicate with other systems. 
you know, have an existing building automation system that's used to control other systems at my facility. I don't want to have multiple interfaces to run my day-to-day -day operations and I'm not a system integrator. You know, like I said earlier, for larger enterprises, warehouses and manufacturing customers, most of them are already going to have uh, some type of building automation or management system in place that's controlling their HVAC, air handlers, security, uh, maybe even some wired lighting controls. You know, and having lighting controls integrate into these existing systems is usually a must have for these kinds of customers. You know, and Simply Snap was designed to play well with others. Uh, we can talk to those systems using standard protocols over BACnet and Modbus. Uh, if you look at the example here, it's a screenshot from a train uh, building automation system and they're monitoring the status of their lighting controls uh, directly from the train interface. And that's a picture of our BMS gateway at the bottom. That's the hardware that makes this type of integration uh, fast and simple. You know, there's some other customers that, you know, want to do some custom integration. Uh, Simply Snap API is a perfect fit for that. It's a programmable interface that allows third party clients uh, to develop their own communication path uh, for controlling and monitoring their lights. We had a recent customer that was already using Simply Snap and they had a um, in-house custom energy software that they had built and they used their own software teams uh, and decided they wanted to integrate Simply Snap into this energy dashboard uh, using our API. Uh, so now they're able to monitor and control their lights along with other energy resources uh, from that same homegrown system. So that's it for the use cases. Just a quick recap, you know, we talked about the flexibility of network-based controls with occupancy sensors uh, and how that can be configured. We talked about daylight harvesting to meet energy codes, uh, task tuning, you know, to improve productivity, um, scalability, you know, to really take on uh, applications that other systems are just unable to manage. Um, Multi-site management for customers that have multiple users and uh, multiple locations and want remote access uh, and uh, integrating with building automation systems. So I think you know, collectively this all makes a pretty compelling case uh, to show the value that Simply Snap can add uh, for both uh, lighting retrofits and new installations. Uh, to wrap up, I want to talk a little bit about commissioning and support. We have three primary levels uh, of commission. Uh, to suit the needs of your customers. First is remote commissioning. This is how most of our projects are done. When we do remote commissioning, sometimes we need the customer to help with validation. Uh, if you have a customer that doesn't want to do that, then smart hands might be a better option. Uh, we have a network of technicians all over North America uh, that can act as our smart hands, or um, you can sign up to be uh, the smart hands for your customer. Uh, we still do the commissioning remotely, um, but you would be kind of our eyes and ears on site. Uh, there are a few benefits if you wish to play the role of the smart hands. Um, it gives you an opportunity to learn more about how Simply Snap works. Uh, it lets you create a stronger relationship with your end user, the customer, and you also get paid for this. Uh, the third option, if you want us to do everything, uh, you know, commission, test, and train the customer on site. Uh, we have that option as well. And that's our premium commissioning service. Uh, this is typically done for uh, larger projects. So there are plenty of Simply Snap systems out there uh, that never have to be touched again. You know, but whenever a customer does want to make an adjustment or needs help, uh, we're here to help. You know, our support and engineering teams are very responsive, as you can see from some of the comments uh, here. You know, the same group of people uh, commissioning Simply Snap are the same ones supporting it. Um, so when you open a ticket with our support team, uh, you'll know you're gonna get uh, to talk to someone who's an expert and that will be responsive to your problem. So if you do have current projects that you're working on or you have any questions about our systems, um, you can reach out or feel free to send us an email uh, to the address on the screen here or simply go online and open a ticket with our support team. Uh, and with that, I will open it up for questions. Uh, again, thank you. And I hope everybody has a good rest of the week. Let's look at some questions here. All right. 
Uh, Michael? Joe. Yes, sir. Joe, here's a question just came in. Um, what about retrofits? Yeah, I think uh, I may have covered that pretty quick at the beginning. I know I flew through a bunch of information. I think for retrofits, our, our new DEM 10 220 is kind of the recommended solution. You know, it's a, it's a, a I guess some people call it a bolt-on controller, but it has a, a half inch, you know, threaded nipple that you can connect to a knockout. Uh, it is IP65 rated. Uh, we've got two options for that product, one with an internal antenna and one with an external antenna option. So I think that's the best, um, the best solution for, for retrofits. Another just question came in and it's asking about uh, motion sensors. What, what brands of motion sensors are you compatible with? I'm gonna, I'm gonna ask you to take that one, Michael. What would you say? Uh, um, Common? Yeah, it's a easy answer there is we've uh, designed our system so we're compatible with any off the shelf 12 volt or 24 volt uh, traditional motion sensor. And also um, we do have the capability with our Dolly 2 products to interface with Dolly 2 sensors uh, like the Wattstopper FDP301. So we also have a uh, sensor input that we can interface with some of the, like the PLC multipoint photo cells. So if you're doing daylight harvesting and, and want a high resolution photo cell, we interface with that and have the software that works with it as well. Gotcha. And let's see. So as you read through, I'm going to make one more point. I guess, okay. you know, with some of the people that have attended uh, the webinar today, I would recommend, um, you know, for more details, a little bit more details about our system um, and maybe some other applications. We've done some recent webinars on parking, uh, parking lots and parking garages and uh, multi-site management uh, that are all on our website under the uh, news and events section. So it's a good resource for viewing past webinars. If you want a little more information, that would be a good place to start. Oh, we just have a couple more questions that came in, Joe. Um, will this presentation be shared later? Yeah, I think if you've, if you've got a, um, a particular customer or if we want to, you know, share this presentation, I'd say we just get in touch with our sales team and we'll figure out the best way of getting it to you. Um, and another question came in is, um, how can we watch this uh, presentation again? Yeah, that's pretty, that, that always happens. We will post this recording. I will send a follow-up email to everybody that attended or registered and didn't get to attend today uh, with a link to the recording so you can watch it uh, again. And I think long term, we'll put these on the uh, the website probably in, within a week or so uh, um, for other people to view. So that's the that's the plan. Let's see. There's no more questions. All right. Waiting to see if any more come in here. You have any enlightening uh, comments or? Uh, yeah, I think it's important to know that um, we're very focused on energy codes. So we're to be relevant, we're staying on top of um, uh, Title 24 and ASHRAE 9.1, and we'll add features as they add new requirements. So it's, it's very important for us to maintain the ability to meet codes. So that's one thing that we really, you know, it's important to us to make sure that uh, if anybody invests into a control system, that we're able to uh, support the latest energy codes. I think, uh, okay, let's see. Here is uh, a new question came in. Which manufacturers are you currently working with? And is there a listing on your website? Yeah. Now we don't currently have a list in our website. These are all, you know, I'd say the, the big names that most of you guys are familiar with. 
um, I'd say if you've got a specific uh, fixture that you're looking at and wondering about options, um, I'd want to get you talking to uh, the sales team to, to kind of find out more. And it may be a, a line that you're already carrying um, or maybe one that we're working on currently that's just not uh, released yet. So I uh, would definitely want to get involved with you if you've got a project and you're curious about which uh, fixtures have embedded options. Just to add a little bit to that, a little color to that is we, we've pretty much done projects with all the major luminaire OEMs and, you know, a bunch of the tier twos and threes as well. And there are some of the major OEMs that um, do have cut sheets with some of our products embedded in it. Then uh, also there's other options for uh, retrofits as well that you can easily add a controller uh, to that luminaire if it's not embedded in it. I guess another little tidbit too is, um, you know, a lot of our products provide uh, power monitoring and there's other features that we will expose uh, as time uh, goes on. And it's mainly by customer requests that we're taking inputs. So there's a lot of diagnostics that we're looking at incorporating that are part of the Dolly 2 standard and D4i. And there's a, uh, whole host of information on D4i. And if you have customer requests or needs, you know, be sure to get a hold of our sales team and provide us uh, some feedback because that's what usually will uh, uh, get us to incorporate some of the feature sets as feedback from customers. All right. Well, I guess if there's nothing else at this time, um, we'll wrap things up. Again, I appreciate everyone taking time to join us today. Uh, enjoyed presenting to you guys. Hopefully you learned uh, a few things and uh, be sure to send us uh, you know, questions or fill out a form online if you wanna get in touch with uh, us for more details. And with that, we'll close it out and uh, everybody have a good rest of today and uh, a good long weekend and uh, stay safe. We'll talk to you guys later. Thank you.